I need a heat tracking device, but how do I set it up? Most of the videos found on YouTube shows me a working device. Yes, I know, it works, but how do I set it up? Can you show me? The one that I finally bought was by Arcbird, but the videos found on YouTube were pathetic. They don't explain anything, and most of them are a couple of years old. And the most recent one is three years old, and it shows me that it doesn't work. So after spending a whole week working on it and multiple failures, I finally got it working, and I'm gonna show you how I got it working. And the documentation on heat tracking is just so horrible. For a newbie like me, things like the gimbal starts moving by itself, and you don't know why. <sighs> Let me begin by going through the anatomy. You have the heat tracker, comprising of the transmitter and the receiver. You also have the gimbal, which is driven by servos, and they are plugged into the flight controller with PWM for servo connect. And lastly, you have the radio controller. And in my case, I'm using a crossfire as an external module. And in this year, I shall be going through groups of components and how to set them up. The first group comprises of the heat tracker receiver and how to connect to the Crossfire heat tracking input port. The second group deals with the setting up of the gimbal, connecting it to the flight controller. The third group deals with the heat tracker transmitter unit that is to be mounted on the goggle. The fourth group deals with the setups in iNav. I bought a wireless heat tracker because I didn't want to deal with cables dangling from my goggles. Okay, group one, hit tracker receiver to the crossfire unit. You have the um, wireless hit module. This is the thing which uh, mounts on your goggles to help track the motion. And it transmits sig signals to the receiver. And this is the receiver. And the receiver, if you look at the diagram, um, there are a couple of pins that you need to set up and, and connect to, to the Crossfire. The cable connecting to Crossfire comes with the Crossfire module and the three pin connector comes with the Arcbird head tracker. You need to do some simple soldering to connect the cables. Plug it into the head tracking socket. Power up the radio control. And normally that would power up your Crossfire module and that is sufficient to drive it. However, looking at the head tracker receiver unit, the power on indicator is not lit up. So let me take a 2S battery and plug it in to power up the module. Normally that will work. So plug it in. All right. Now it draws current from the two cell external battery. However, the heat tracking unit is still not powered up. The heat tracking receiver unit needs to be driven by a battery, which is between 8 and 20 volts. So a 3S, 4S, 5S battery would work. The next thing we need to do is to set up the Crossfire module. Head into the devices. And then to the heat tracker. The settings for pan, tilt, and roll will be rolled out. Although the documentation of the heat tracking uh, transmitter says that channel 1 to 8 are available, 1 to 6 does nothing. It is only 7 and 8 that transmit signals. Source channel 7 is tilt and source channel 8 is pan. I only discovered this after the whole thing was done. So please do the switch yourself. So the pen source or the tilt source is referring to the source channel coming from the heat tracker unit. The destination and the tilt destination refers to the channels of the crossfire unit. And since crossfire nano gives me 12 channels, channel 11 and 12 are the ones that I use to transmit the data of the head tracker to the flight controller. 
Another important piece of information is that when you set up the pen destination and tilt destination as source 11 and 12, the Crossfire module will overwrite the channel 11 and 12 data or signals that comes from your radio control unit. Let's take a look at what I have set up on my radio. Let's head over to the mixer and scroll down to channel 11 and 12. On the radio, on channel 11 and 12, I set them up to receive inputs from the dial S1 and S2. And on the Crossfire module, you have to turn the pan destination and the tilt destination to off. Otherwise, when we adjust the dial, the servo is not going to move because the values from the dial is overwritten by the Crossfire module and we are not done setting up the heat tracking um, transmitter unit yet. So using the dials, um, check for the pen as well as the tilt functions to make sure they are functioning correctly. So at this point, I know for sure that the radio unit communicates well with the flight controller and from the flight controller controls the servos nicely. So the next thing to set up is the head tracker transmitter unit. Please take note of the location the head tracker transmitter unit is supposed to be mounted on the goggle and as well as the orientation um, it's supposed to take. Otherwise the registration that we're going to do next will not be done correctly. The first time you turn on the head tracker transmitter unit, it powers up, blinks, and then goes into a steady blinking in terms of the blue light. And although it seems like it registered, no matter how you rotate, nothing happens to your servo. Don't panic. Long press the white button until both the orange and the blue lights complete blinking. Hold steady the head tracker transmitter unit. And when the blue light starts blinking periodically, the calibration and registration are complete. Okay, seems like it's not too bad. It behaves accordingly. Next, I will talk about the relationship between the heat tracking transmitter unit and the servo's um, orientation. After calibration and registration, each time you press the white button, it locks the orientation of the heat tracker unit to the midpoint or the neutral point of the gimbal or the servos. This is just to demonstrate to you locking the head tracker with a different orientation to the neutral point of the servos or the gimbal. The reason for that is that where you're standing and facing may not be directly in the same direction as your plane or um, your RC car or something. Another thing to note is that when the head tracking unit rotates beyond the extreme angles of the servos, the servos um, swing back, but um, it will assume the orientation once your head tracking unit is pointing in the um, general range that is allowed. Usually, after using the head tracker unit for some time, the orientation of the head tracking transmitter and that of the servo may go out of alignment. No worry, you just have to point um, back to whichever orientation you may be facing. Press the white button again and it automatically resets the alignment back to the neutral position and you are good to continue. Last but not least, I'm going to talk about how to set up the flight controller with INAF. Head over to the mixer. I chose Flying Wing because my flight controller only has six PWM ports. So the S1 and S2 are already taken by motor 1 and 2. The PWM S3, S4, S5, S6 are mapped to servos 1 to 4. So do bear in mind that the servos 1, 2, 3, 4 do not correspond to the PWM 1, 2, 3, 4 accordingly. They do not correspond. 
Servo 1 and 2 are meant for the servos controlling the wings. So we're going to leave it as is and use servos 3 and 4 mapped to PWM 5 and 6, which is pan and tilt for the gimbal. And if you have a flight controller that has a lot more PWM outputs, you can add new mixer rule and allocate the servo to whatever PWM output that is needed. And remember we assigned the value of the pan and tilt to the RC channels 11 and 12. So we have to assign them to servos 3 and 4. Next, we head over to the outputs to set the minimum, maximum and the midpoint or the neutral point of the servos. The minimum value as well as the maximum value sets the extreme ends of the rotation and the midpoint is where you would like the camera to be pointing at when it is in neutral position. To understand what the values mean, you can set the values in the midpoint and save it. When you save it, the servo will automatically be pointing in that direction and hence you understand, okay, in this case 1600 is pointing towards that particular angle and you can do the necessary adjustment accordingly. So using this method, the minimum as well as the maximum range of the rotation can be determined. Followed by the midpoint. Another quick way to check the angles is to use the dial. Remember, earlier we mentioned, you have to turn the destination um, channels to off in order for the crossfire to not overwrite the values that comes from the radio control dial. So this is the angle at 500 and this is the angle at 2200. Similarly, use it to check the extreme angles for the pen as well as the neutral position. And since everything is working nicely, we bring in the hate tracking transmitter unit. Turn it on. Remember, it does nothing until you press on the white button again to start the registration. And that's it. You got it working. The last and final part that I would mention is should the direction of the servo be opposite to the direction of the head tracking transmitter then you will have to reverse um, the direction of the mapping and save it. This is just to show you that when the head tracking unit is uh, pointing down, it tilts up. When it turns up, it tilts down. So that's pretty much about it. Okay, have fun.